Yeah, so I think that's where this is so this historical piece that you helped to bring is really important in telling this entire story because I think that there's a disconnect because I think sometimes people p- feel like Prince just poof appeared out of thin air. Right. Uh, and, right. And Purple Rain, you know, it's like, oh my God, that's, oh, oh. you know, and I'm like, oh no, this guy did not just poof out of thin air, you know. And he, oh, absolutely. I'm so and you know, Gary and Prince were very good friends, and Gary will tell you that he mm-hmm. used to call you, what, once a week at three in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get, went way back, and, and you know, I'm so glad you both have said that, because if I could just say just, just quickly, just yeah, please. Uh, in terms of. Uh, piggybacking on what you what you uh, just brought up, uh, D. Prince uh, is a product of again that emanated from a very rich and thriving uh, uh, black community uh, culturally, mm-hmm. musically. Uh, here, uh, blues was going on, gospel was going on, rock and roll, R and B. There were R and B groups here that could rival the Motown groups. Yep. I mean, groups like uh, Showtime Part One and Two, Philadelphia Story. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on. Um, and and uh, Prince came up with that, and, and I was a, a senior. Uh, our family had moved, like, again, from New York to Minneapolis. And, and uh, a few years uh, after that, I was a senior at Minneapolis Central High School, and uh, Bryant Junior High School is literally just, like, three blocks uh, down the street from Central. And I say that to say this, uh, that the, both the music uh, and the uh, athletic uh, departments of, of both schools uh, interacted regularly. So I'll never forget in my senior year, I started hearing rumors about this dude down at Bryant Junior High that was a beast on every instrument and, uh, you know, was an all-city basketball player. Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> and, and it's so funny, uh, again, that you, that you mentioned that, too, because, you know, the people that don't know, uh, you know, the athletic side of Prince and why he loves sports so much and all that. Uh, but, but Bryant and Central High School uh, were, were really sports schools, so even to make the team... Uh, you know, you had to be really good, and he was like all city, uh, which people don't even know. Yep, at five two, it's crazy. I know. I mean, uh, I mean, Jam Jam them used to tell us about him, man, playing uh, basketball. Because remember, we had the basketball goal at flight time, Gary, and yep. you know, we'd get out there and mix it up. And uh, uh, we've heard stories about Prince that you know he would take you to the hole. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh yes, that was one of his favorite things because he he also had a uh, uh, hoop out at uh, at um, yeah Paisley uh, yeah and and one of his favorite things as, as you just alluded to uh, because so many people didn't know it and you know celebrities and and, and uh, sports figures and all that would come out there all the time you know just to check it out or whatever what might be going on and uh, one of his favorite things to do was to you know say hey, you want to do a little one on one and you know they. Some of them would laugh because they were like, okay, okay. <laughs> I heard and he had a box of tennis shoes to fit anybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, like you said, he would, he would take them to the hole, you know, because they didn't know. Hey, Gary, do you remember when Prince used to play out at Phelps Park and play basketball out there? And didn't Absolutely. they perform out at Phelps? I kind of remember seeing yes, him there. Yes, he did. In fact, one of the things, God bless him, in fact, frequently the, the, the general media downplays how Afrocentric he was, which is why he wrote Baltimore, you know, one of his last songs, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. Right. But yet, I say that to say this, uh, wherever he was in the world, uh, to your question, I mean, um, is after he, you know, got to the international prominence and all that kind of thing, he would still come back and play the Northside Festival over at Phyllis Wheatley. You oh, know, yeah. Free, there'd be, and, you know, Spike Moss, a shout out to Spike, you know, would put that on. There'd be 40, 50,000 black folks, no fights, no guns, no whatever. Just, just playing. Uh, a lot of times, Sounds of Blackness would open up the evening, and then uh, would be the time, and you know all the kind of. Thing. Well, they would still flight time at the time, and then of course Prince would close it out. But wherever he was in the world, he would tell promoters, managers, whatever. Uh, that night, I got to be on the north side, you know, and uh, just big props to him. And you know what I remember about the north side? Uh, the way. The way. The way was. It, was that next to Phil Sweetly or nearby? Yeah, yeah, just just uh, a few blocks away. Well, yeah. I remember, like around fifteen or sixteen years old, the girls from St. Paul, me and Deanie, <laughs> the Deanie. De- Lady Virgo, we went over to the way, and that was a scary time because the Northside girls did not want us over there. That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. So yeah. we would get followed, and they would talk about it. Of course, me because I'm, you know. I would be called whatever, half and half, mulatto. 
but yeah, that was scary to be over to be over on the north side. But I did it because I wanted to hear see the bands and I wanted to see the battle of the bands. Telling somebody recently, y'all don't realize almost every guy I knew was in a band. That's right. Andre Lewis, David Ellis had a band. Carl Walker was my pian- organ teacher. He tried, bless right. his heart. Um, all these people, uh, Stevie Jones from uh, Midwest Express. Midwest Express. He was he. They lived three doors from us over at Wheelock, and they had Midwest Express with a Dresa and all that. That's in my book. Yeah. People you know, never mention lost, them. We just lost a Dresa last year, by the way. I saw that, and you know he was yeah. my hairdresser. Yeah, yeah, and it's so funny that, that it, of course, in, in more recent times. Uh, uh, the current uh, crop crop of people know him more as a hairdresser, which he was a great one. Mm-hmm. But I, I, when you say a dresser, I think a guitar. I think musician. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to flush it all out. There's so much, Gary. It was such rich history, and of course the gospel. You know, the Steels used to come to my grandfather's Pentecostal church and sing. You know, right? I mean, I it's. I can't even separate it. When people say things to me, I'm like, you don't even know. Let's not even talk about it. Exactly. You know, they don't even know. So You had to be but, there. You had to be you there. You had to be exactly. there. And Gary, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. I call you the godfather of the Minneapolis Sound. Oh, my goodness. Yes, God. you are. I, that's, she, that's, what, that far. that's what she says, though, Gary, to the godfather. Of the I love show. him to death. He is such a sweet person and a kind soul, and his heart and his music it has helped me through so many things. I don't even want to start crying, but <laughs> so many oh, things. Bless you. Um, bless, Gary, tell bless, the bless, story bless. about Janet Jackson. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, because that's another one that, that uh, as the kids say, you have to get it twisted sometimes when it gets told. But um, Jimmy and Terry uh, had were working, uh, you know, with Janet, I think, on Control at the time, you know, one of her earlier uh, records, mm-hmm. but, of course, it later be- became internationally, as so many did. Um but uh, they were in town recording, and uh, this was like very, this was like 1990, about, yeah, like 1990, I believe. Um, and long story short, uh, we were, it was back, it was January of 19, and the reason I remember that is because we were doing our annual Martin Luther King concert uh, at the Ordway uh, Center for the Arts in downtown St. Paul, and uh, beautiful auditorium, as you both know, mm-hmm. and uh, Jan and Lewis. Uh, brought Janet to the concert. I'll never forget because the, the place was packed, sold out, and uh, they came in right before the concert. And there was we were still backstage in the wings, but we could hear this hush come over the crowd. You know, kind of thing. It's like, what's what's going on? Anyway, we later found out that was, of course, uh, people's reaction to Janet uh, after the concert. Uh, they, Jam and Lewis brought her backstage uh, to meet the group and all of that. And uh, then we stepped aside, and it was just me and Terry and uh, Janet and myself. And I'll never forget. Um, she told them, she said, you guys, the world needs to hear this right now. Uh, don't wait any longer to put them out. Now, we had already started recording the record, uh, and but what she did, what Janet did, was to act as a catalyst to Jimmy and Terry to, uh, to put some urgency to releasing us. Yes, and we know what happened. <laughs> yeah. And the Grammy. Re- as, and the, and, <laughs> Grammy. And as they say, the rest is history. Exactly, and, and and right right behind us was our former label mate. Uh, say, who are these monstrous dudes from Kansas City? Yeah, <laughs> low key. Well, think about you want to fail and 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 all these things. <laughs> I, oh man, yeah, that's what I t- about. I tell you what, I tell you what, Gary, we had such a wonderful time touring with you guys, and we did that black co- college tour. Man, that was oh my god, that was so much fun. And uh, we, we, every night we rocked the house. Every night, man, it was it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, every night, every night, uh, Melene, we were blessed to uh, tour. Oh my God, we uh, Grambling and, and uh, Southern and, and oh, so Grambling. you know about Coach Robinson? Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we we did we did Tuskegee and man, I can't. How many how many schools did we do, Gary? Well, wow, ten or fifteen schools. About twenty. Twenty. Yeah, it might. Wow. We were we were out for a while. Um, and, uh, yeah, and uh, to be going to those schools, we didn't go to my school, so I'm, that that hurt me. We didn't go to Florida A and M, but uh, but uh, 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 we didn't get to FAMU. No, we didn't go to FAMU, man. 
That you was... know what's so crazy about that? I told Darren, when I lived out in uh, Virginia for a year when my parents were divorcing, we lived next door to Fred Humphreys. Oh, he yeah, was the, the president. president of FAMU yep. when I was living in Reston, Virginia for that year. Yeah. Small, small, I know it's a world. small world. I was looking through the booklet for the um, uh, Coach Robinson going away party where Ann Nesby performed and other people performed. And I was also looking through the book from our artist management seminar, and Saunders, your manager, and your name was in there supporting us, as well as Jimmy and Terry. And how ironic was it, though, Gary, for me to go to Kansas City and meet Darren (laughs) and ended up back in the music industry? You know, it's like full circle. Well, sir, well, it's that circle and cycle of life. You know, I don't even use the word coincidence anymore. No. Yeah, because no. he brought me back to to Minneapolis to Jimmy and Terry's picnic. You were there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And and I saw Jimmy Jam. That when I first walked in, Jimmy was right there, and I said, "Jimmy, you remember me?" He said, "Maylene, <laughs> nobody forgets you." <laughs> I, I see, that, that's what I was saying earlier. Right. It was a memorable event. Jerome was there, and I reconnected with him, and. You know, yes. I don't know if I would have, I mean, I was always in contact with you, but I just don't know if I would have reconnected with everybody, you know, like that. It, it's just a beautiful story. Our story, our time in Minneapolis, you guys were so inspiring because when I was, you know, moving around the country with my husband and helping him do what he had to do and I was trying to do my thing, I was always inspired when I would see you guys or hear your music or turn on the radio, the TV. And I said, those are my people, you know. Well, by uh, the way, Gary, uh, you know I do the gospel show here in Kansas City. Uh, and yes. we've, I, I pretty much got, I believe, and optimistic, you know, playing a couple times every morning for the people here. So, uh, but, but, yeah, we, we look forward to the new music uh, for sure. Uh, it's just, uh, it seems like all the, you know, everything's coming back full circle, Gary. I mean, wonder what low key gonna come back or some what's gonna what's going on here, you know? I mean, <laughs> I know, I know. It's exciting, actually. Yeah, it is. I'm it excited is. about yeah. the possibilities. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Gary, we we man, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy, busy schedule mm-hmm. to uh, to speak with us. Um, you are a treasure, uh, a true friend. Um, and I'm so excited about uh, you guys getting back with, with Jimmy and Terry. Um, everybody coming back home. I, uh, you got to get you got to get Dre out there, man, and put him on something, man. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh, absolutely, brother. You know, yep, I mean, because yep. he still you you heard him at Big Jim's funeral. He still got it, man. Oh, I yeah, mean, he's, he's oh my goodness, yeah. yeah, Lord, oh yeah, he, yeah, he still got it, man. I mean, wow. Yes, he does. So. Uh, yes, he does. The, don't don't sleep on Dre. I mean, I just I just want to hear him sing some more. I don't care what he's singing. I don't care if he's singing a jingle. I just want to mm-hmm. hear him yep. sing. You know, I agree with that. Oh yes, yep. it is. Yes, it is. So uh, be looking out for the Sounds of Blackness new single dropping uh, March 29th. Uh, Gary Hines, the founder and director of the Sounds of Blackness, on with us on Story Behind the Music, along with also Mayling Stonepool, the Little Red Corvette. Gary, thank you so much again for uh, being on the program. We will stay in touch. We love you. Uh, stay up. Uh, Let me just say, too, Darren. Please. I love you, Gary. Thank you for giving me your time over these years and being a, such a faithful friend and praying oh. for me and my family all these years. It, that's every day, and I love you both like Dumbo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a lot of love. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah, lot of love. love you, that's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of love, my brother. You're you're listening. You're listening to the story behind the music. We'll see you next time.